Well, I'm a supporter of you baseball. baseball. You're all set Sorry to go. To you out. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. I will call this meeting to order. This is the regularly scheduled uh, Town Council Communications Committee. Today is Wednesday, July 10th, and it is 4 p.m. Let the record show that in attendance are myself, April Scyther, uh, John Anderson, and Don Cushing is also here. Um, item three is approval of the minutes from June 12th, 2024. I have a motion. Second. Any discussion? Nope. Nope. I'm all set to. Uh, all those in favor? Nope. Great. Item four, and this was um we were we talked last meeting about streamlining the agenda a little bit and not making it so itemized, um, and kind of just giving the town council a portion of the meeting to deal with our standing business and then turn it over to the town so that they could discuss any updates or standing business that they had. Um, and so we'll try this today. Um, and if it doesn't work, and we'll go, we'll go a different way. Um, but for item four, town council council communications planning, um, my, in my mind, this is just our regular standing business. So, um, councilor corner articles, we have Karen um, scheduled to have something submitted to you by tomorrow um, okay. for the July fifteenth e newsletter. Um, about the land bond and the work that the PCLB does um, and whatever direction she takes with that. Um, but we need authors for August 1st and August 15th. Suggestions? I was thinking, um, Nick mentioned at our last council meeting about doing a reflection on goals year to date. So I feel like that could be a good article for August 1st. And then for the 15th, Perhaps if we're acting on referendum questions at the next meeting based on the workshop, because right, we have a workshop next week, somebody could write an article. Like I would, I would volunteer to say we had a workshop, here's what we talked about, here's what we decided, or we're voting on it on that meeting, but that might be something to just put out there before we vote on it. Yeah. So in terms of um Upcoming meetings, we had our leadership meeting this morning to set next um, Wednesday's agenda, and it's a lengthy agenda. 
Um, and then we had also talked about needing to go into executive session to discuss the contracts one more time. And then with our summer meeting schedule, only having the one July meeting and the one August meeting, we had tentatively pitched the idea that we would have um, an additional workshop on, on August 7th, which is that first Wednesday um, in August, and that we would potentially start the meeting with um, Nick just doing a little review of our goals. Okay. Because we had because we just couldn't figure out a way yeah. to like get that onto the July agenda. Mm -hmm. It was already so long. Um, and then move into executive session. And then I had actually proposed that we talk about having Councilor Corner live that night as well. Oh, okay. Um, and so anybody who wants to stay through for Councilor Corner Live, we'll just bump mm -hmm. Councilor Corner Live to 6 30 mm -hmm. um and do it 6 30 to 8. And that way we can take care of some town council business that we just don't have time for mm -hmm. um, on the agenda. And then also that's kind of built in standing time for a lot of counselors anyway. Mm -hmm. I also talked to Andrew Mackey um, for about a half an hour yesterday and the um, he has like all kinds of summer engagements and evening meetings and info sessions at the library and all kinds of things. So it was going to be challenging to find a day when someone from the land trust could come to the Counselor Corner Live mm -hmm. and the seventh work for Andrew Perfect. as well. So if if we could finalize that, I will send that information to Karen so that she can put it in her Counselor Corner or I'll just drop it into her Counselor Corner when she sends it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I can also confirm with Andrew that we are going to do that Counselor Corner Live um, on the seventh. How does all of that sound? Is okay. a lot. Yeah. Okay. So we'll have a workshop on the first potentially to talk about goals. On the seven. So August. so the so I would almost flip flop your two ideas. Okay. That makes sense. So we're gonna have the referendums workshop is next Wednesday. Mm -hmm. That's our workshop time. So if somebody wanted to draft an article that summarizes the referendum questions and the discussion to that point, I then that could be that. our August first. Um and then um, we could ask Nick to do the goals one for the 15th. We could also plug the council for the workshop on the land barn on your column on the first. Yep. Yeah. 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 yeah, that'll give us two the... that'll give us two opportunities mm -hmm. in print. Perfect. Okay, awesome. Um, so that covers all three topics for me, the, the Counselor Corner articles, the Counselor Corner Live, and I wanted to touch base, base a little bit um, with the land bond, but we can do that in 96 of the agenda. And so if you guys don't have any other standing business, I'm going to turn it over to town staff. So you want to bring up your slide? Sure, thank okay. you. I just did a quick bulleted list um, so you could see it visually of um, things I wanted to inform you on that I've been working on. The first and the largest is developing uh, kind of a communications calendar of the major topics and projects that are happening right now and looking ahead through the fall, even up to November with the election. So right now I'm working on a calendar that um, kind of shows it'll indicate the timeline for each of these and when I'm going to start communicating about it and even just now talking about the council corner live and plugging in these council corner article topics that'll be good to include in these but it's basically just keeping track of all of these moving parts mm -hmm. and um, trying to get ahead of just kind of informing people about a date that something's happening but also getting more like the content too and being able to pull that out to make it accessible for people um, and then for ones like the new fire pumper truck and the police cameras, we're going to be working with those departments um, just to make sure we're aligned on their own campaign for it and that it's integrated with um, town communications. And then also just kind of with our conversations that we've had around thinking about what the purpose of the message is, what the key points are, and what we're trying to get people to um take away from it. I'm just being conscious of that. So I'm in this brainstorming phase right now. Um, and it seems like a lot of it's going to kick off more um, in earnest in August. So um, yeah, giving myself the next couple of weeks to work on that. Um, so also we have a board and committee newsletter that we've been doing 
March, July, November type of sequence. So that one's coming up at the end of July. Um, so just working with staff on that. The photo contest launched a couple of weeks ago. So that's been getting some good response so far. So I'm going to be using that. And that's going to just be an ongoing kind of fun thing this summer to um, roll out on social media. And um, something that one of my goals that I've been thinking about, and I can't remember if we've talked about it as a group, but, but um, doing more engagement to the public, the general public who aren't necessarily an active um, subscriber or follower of town news. Um, so I have been looking into what it would take to do a print mailing, maybe like a four page spread or something. And um, kind of taking the high level points from our bi-weekly newsletters, but culminating them into maybe like a spring and a fall edition or something like that. And then another thought is um, getting the addresses of um, homes that were recently sold and then sending out a welcome packet to new residents, um, just with kind of like basic overview information. So um, yeah, just thinking of ideas about that and reaching out to um, the local printer that we use in other departments. Mm -hmm. One thing I, but this made me think though, are we going to have a booth at Summerfest for the council or? That was on my list too. Okay. Um, so the email went out with the request for vendors. Okay. And since it's, it's, it's a generic email that she sends out to people who, you know, have food truck or a tent or whatever, but we now are part of that group. So I responded yes and figured best, you know, better to hold it and then yeah. have that table and, ha and have them plan on us. Um, and then I'm happy to do some outreach with the council and, and get some volunteers. Mm -hmm. It's always a tricky one. This year I can do it. Last year I felt yeah, terrible I can, trying to get people to do something that I couldn't do. So I can do it. I just have another booth I'm going to be at too. So I won't be able to be there the whole time, but I can. Well, aren't you just the man of the town? I'm so bored. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll have to do booths. Swap out your new bag. <laughs> That's great. Summer fest date is the 14th of August. And I'm looking forward to this land bond plan uh, topic that we have on the agenda too, because that'll help right. fill in my calendar. The only friendly suggestion I would have to like keep on your radar too, and it's probably more just making sure we're supporting them is whatever the SBAC comms committee is going to be doing. Like I just don't want to lose the momentum. That's a good point. Yeah, kind of like wrapped it up with the last um presentation but yeah knowing that it'll resume with phase two yeah yeah and my assumption is that committees my understanding was the board voted to keep that committee the subcommittee moving mm -hmm. and so i just want to make sure mm -hmm. it doesn't stop and then we start then, again yeah. later like how do we keep yeah the conversation going even if it's just light mentioned to different things yep They've been really communicative to this round, so that's mm -hmm. really helpful. And um, yeah, good point to not drop it off. Yeah. Anything else on the town side? Questions for Allison or Liam? One question, um, maybe just an observation suggestion. When I look at the list here, I'm trying to think of it in terms of a broad message. One of the one side of it is what's coming, why, how does this benefit you? Mm -hmm. And the other side of it is what happened and how does this benefit you? So I don't know where like Scott will go that fits in there. But, uh, as an example, uh, other than mustache, just on there for you, but the Scarborough State bird is the yellow cone or the orange cone. <laughs> so I'm not sure which one that Scarborough goes with, but, but that just pretty that general proposition. Yeah. Um, they may get you to your money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just the, the North Scarborough road work is, uh, I think, the, there's some intersection redesign work that went into to improve safety. Plus, it's a high, um, uh, high incidence or uh, accident. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
but that that was pretty far from the situation. Yeah, yeah. Like the it, traffic lights all through. Yeah. Uh, uh, I I do not have an update. I'm just curious. I see a theme of you know conservation and and climate change. That's what I noticed traffic. too. I saw a lot of conservation. So it, um, yeah, like we have a sustainable Scarborough Day coming up again mm -hmm. on in October. So I thought I was. Yeah, lining up like, oh, oh those would good. be good to have um, tabling for that. Um, and then I, I also see it as these are projects that are kind of being hap happening now, but looking towards the future, kind of a proactive um, approach to future CIPs and funding. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I was trying to think of some other key messaging of like how to, I like that you pointed out the conservation piece, but like, I see other ways like talking about it kind of investing in our infrastructure, kind of with the community center, fire engine, police cameras, depending on how far we go or what we decide tomorrow in finance committee, we're starting the conversation around our council goal for developing the capital plan. So there may be like this theme of like, hey, we have capital investments. We're starting a process to look at the big ones. Might be correct in remembering that the part be aware is that if you're looking at capital stuff, which is basically maintenance kinds of things, money, which investments that have already been like replacement plan. Replacement plan. For for our goal, it's more about the big investments that are coming. Right. Don asked us to look at the that piece, which is not on the agenda for tomorrow. That's right. that's something that I think we're waiting to see if but when the, Liam provided information. The point was to, to differentiate between mm -hmm. yeah. normal uh, replacements and yeah. like continuing to maintain infrastructure and so forth, mm -hmm. which is technically capital spending versus we're gonna buy some new stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But I see like with the police cameras land. Like some of it, like it, some of it fit multiple things, right? Mm -hmm. like, yeah, and then I was wondering about community center, like what the theme is with that one. I think that's the capital priority piece, right? Like we, we need to make these investments and in different capital pieces. If we add the SBAC on here, that's the school piece. Um, and we have other choices coming that are big investments for the public with the referendum for the fire engine, whose cameras land bond. And so it's like, we're just, we want to continue to provide good services for our community. And these are okay. investment choices we yeah, have. Investment, make sure that we're framing it as, you know, this, these are investments we're making. Yeah. Right? And these are the public benefits that you'll get from the investment. And when you have to decide to vote, right. hopefully you'll figure out whether it's a good investment for what you're looking for. Um, I was also wondering if the new fire truck, the police cameras, and the land bond, if if it would be better to treat them each as their own three different talking points or to talk more holistically about what's coming up in the November ballot. I think both. I think we do both, right? Like a, That's kind of like what I would think I'm going to do for my counselor corner is like, talk broadly, but then mm -hmm. talk about each one, but I'm sure each one deserves its own detailed article in the future. Right, yeah. They each need their own three, but then like, is there any overarching sort of like message around? So on the fire engine, uh, I think it'll be very important to convey to people why we vote on the fire engine. I don't think that's proper fun for people. And then the second piece is to put it in a longitudinal perspective so that people don't have the sense that we are just deciding to go out and buy a fire engine. Mm -hmm. But that, in essence, mm -hmm. my understanding, of it, which makes great sense, is that there's, there's a lot of new time involved, cheaper in the long term to replace these things while they still have residual value all of that stuff. So the major message for all some of these things is that this is fiscally responsible. It's not, okay. but there's a very common perception, this perception of that is that we just go buy stuff. 
I do that a lot. I don't probably they're just going to spend spend more of our money. And what's interesting about it is that these referendums have a dimension to them, which is this is how we tell you we don't like the perception that we do spend all our money. So what I can do is I can say, yeah, you probably need this by a truck, but this is the only control I have. So not, and so I think you need to be mindful of that mm -hmm. as as you convey this, because there are a lot of people out here who say, I'm sorry, sorry <laughs> that, you know, I heard somebody say we have a lot of technology, we have a building that's that tall. And then, <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's harder to do for the police camera one now to like, because that is really, like so, those, isn't that already approved? Mm -hmm. It has to go to referendum. So you approve it and you approve it as part of the budget without mm -hmm. going yeah. over to the same staff that buyers. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. I think that's the same thing. It's that there's, you know, tons of evidence that says that this actually saves us money. And that these are not expenses, they're investments. Yeah. And so that's the kind of messaging. Yeah. Or not, but, you know, that's the, the maybe that's kind of like I don't you're making me think like are there like three messages you make for each one it's what's the fiscal benefit what's the public benefit and then is there a different benefit that you would want to just highlight, and again, different ones are going to be different. Well, they'll, they'll be different. You know, I think that you know, the, the fire engine is basically an extension of the idea that we are all benefit from having an up to date responsive fire. Yeah. I think that, that's one. I think the police body camera one is. It that protects you, it protects the town. So if somebody stops you and an officer is out of line, that's going to be so it creates a situation where it creates accountability for the police officers and it also protects them from mm -hmm. the bad people who might otherwise be able to sue us for doing the, the thing. So we, Mm -hmm. All of the long I see transportation study. Mm -hmm. Just trying to give you some of the negative perspectives. Yeah. I see transportation study and I say, let's buy some more consultants. <laughs> let's just mm -hmm. let's just do another report. I know Bernie was a consultant, a very successful one. And he refuses to write reports for clients that you want to report. He says, I'm not here to give you cover so that you can show about that you're going to consult in your report. Mm -hmm. If you want to solve the problem, then I'll write your report after we're all done and try to solve the problem. <laughs> and so there's so there's a perception around those things that we're just going to study it and adopt it and work. Well, what comes out of that study is going to be significant capital investments that we're going to have to make as a town to improve traffic. So it's like, to me, it's it's so like it the precursor to do. Yeah, because there's already the master plan that we got that is driving the impact fees right. was part of the study. Yeah. And so there's another part in there on Highest Parkway that's also a master plan that's going to indicate a significant investment we're going to have to make in the future if we want to make changes to Highest. So the question I have is then how these things are, are taking place over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, sort of the, the rule of advertising is how many impressions do you have? Mm -hmm. How many? And, and one doesn't cut. And so, each one of those topics seems like they are worthy. Of multiple pieces of information, multiple yeah. points of contact. I don't know that we have the channels that actually support that. We have the newsletter, 
and we have the council corner and what else do we have that would allow us to have an ongoing or at least snippets there are public meetings scheduled for open space plan vulnerability assessment i imagine there's going to be a workshop on the transportation study um in the fall and then i know a few of these departments have plans to be at summer fest to kind of mm -hmm. be doing the public engagement piece um and then also just a matter of pulling out content and being able to mm -hmm. talk about it on yeah. rotation i think the land bond item when we get to that would be a good example to run through that because i think i've even heard here like like you said oh the sustainability day is happening like i hope there's a booth to talk right. about the land bond or that that again we align maybe we need a booth there too and we talk about the land bond or we ask the sustainability or pclb hey are you guys going to get a booth and be there because that's really your audience that you would want to talk to about the land bond so i think maybe if we use that and start like because i agree with you like I, I was looking at this assuming these are like the key focuses and that they're going to be kind of yeah out. fill it yeah. yeah filling it in with the dates and the channels yeah yeah so why don't we why don't we kind of just mer merge into the next agenda item which i was hoping that this committee would kind of use as an exercise to do exactly what we're talking about mm -hmm. and so liam if you could pull up the communications plan framework um so if we could just take a stab at filling this in and i and i as this conversation as i've been listening to you guys the last thing i want to do is um, give the perception that we are putting more emphasis on the land bond question than we are the other two questions. Um, I had chosen the land bond to work our way through this framework as kind of an example yeah. of, of maybe how we would work as a committee. Mm -hmm. um, and so that we have something that, you know, the public can see and they can see our train of thought and have a line of sight into mm -hmm. what our work is. Um, that being said, like I'm open to if we wanted to broaden this to make it referendum questions, we could try and tackle all three. I just, it, my brain doesn't function like that. My brain wants to take each one. Yeah. Like, each one's like, I, think I think the land bond is helpful. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So if we refer to this project as land bond referendum, uh, the timeline is between now and uh, November. It's the date of the election. Yep. I would I would even argue that we started it in June when we had a finance committee meeting. So if people wanted sure. to like start. Okay. Sure. So once the council decides to put this out to recommend it, mm -hmm. is that all we've decided or have we decided that we think the wind bond is productive? No. So the council, the council would just endorse it being on the referendum. We'll just put it on there. Yeah, and and then as individual counselors, whether or not we support it, that's no. There's no formal council action taken taken to support the land bond itself, and so that's one of those times when, as individual counselors, we all can have our own opinion, and there's no quote unquote party line on supporting or not supporting. Mm -hmm. It doesn't also the council may not do it. Right. Yes, that's yeah. entirely possible too. Well, that's sort of an interesting thing because we are had the ability to vote to keep it off the bat, but mm -hmm. it's basically saying collectively no. Mm -hmm. But we have no mechanism to say collectively yes, which basically means which I would suggest that we Somebody should make a motion that the council actually endorse it. And I don't know how that happens in yeah. this context. You guys do leadership and so forth. So we put up up. And then if somebody like me raises his hand out of blue and says, I'd like to you know, make a motion that this council endorse the land for them, I think, well, that's not going to be doing it. Just right. some time. So I guess what I'm saying is, I would like to, if the council, if there was an agenda for them, which put us all on record and decided to be supportive of the land bond or not supportive. I think that's what the workshop will. What tends to happen is anytime something like this 
when we vote to put something on a referendum, we've done it for the library, we did it for the school project, is council will make their ind counselors will make their individual statements, kind of their position statements. And inevitably, at least one person will say, I'm not necessarily in favor of this, but I am in favor of putting it to the people. Which is fine. And so then so it goes to I the people. Like, I'd like to fill that in with just its passing in. But I can't right. say that. You cannot. Okay. <laughs> well, and I don't always, I could say that. Simply, we put the council on record and say it is the council's position, whether it's six to one or five to seven mm -hmm. or whatever. I could very easily say that our mission here is a past land. Yeah. So I think I don't want to believe yeah. that. But I think our mission is not necessarily to pass it. Our mission is to adequately inform the public to make a decision whether they want to support it or not at the polls. Yeah. Right. Uh, like uh, I, yes, that's what should be under the present circumstances. Yeah. I'm just saying that on some of these issues, you know, uh, we take a position in the public where you know where you start it and have a yeah, have a lot of music after ten o'clock. <laughs> it strikes me as more important. I think I think the difference is our charter. We don't have the authority because of the value. So, like, if it was under six hundred thousand dollars, then it's council authority. Yeah, you just... but, right. But I think that's it. Really, is a key point because you're right. We, by charter, have to make a decision to put it to yeah. the voters. We cannot put it to the voters. But there isn't anything that prevents us from going on record collectively and saying your town council supports this. Or we could go the opposite way and say your town council does not support this, but we also feel that you deserve the right to vote on it. But yeah. that's a little weird. Yeah, <laughs> some communities actually they they allow for or require preference votes. Okay, what is that? But, so uh, there was a so the town of Cannonbunk actually they had an issue was that road acceptance, mm -hmm. uh, and so the five members of the select board, five to two voted to send it to the voters, and they have a secondary vote for do you support the passage of it, and that was a different vote that was a four to three vote. I'm interested now. Um, right. So, because yeah. someone said, I support putting it to the voters based on the merits of, of whatever, but I personally don't support it being passed by the voters. And, and I could easily fall into that category because I believe that I should not impose my view when by charter we have we, we've decided that this is your prerogative. Mm -hmm. But as your representative, as your representative body, I think that if we take that position, then it does put us in a position to say, okay, if we don't support it, then we wouldn't spend a lot of time trying to communicate it or inform it, we would just let it go. Mm -hmm. But if we do support it collectively, then we would do this. So implicit in the fact that we're going to communicate mm -hmm. vigorously about this, we are implying that we support it, but we can't say we don't. I made my point. <laughs> so that's so we're we're, we're going to adequately inform the public of the issues. So let's. Mm -hmm. You want to be more specific than that? Um. The the intentions, the financial impact, the. Yeah, I mean, proposed uses of the funds, which is another question. Those in this be one. key messages too, right? I there's mean, a those under the financial. Key. There's a conservation thirty by thirty initiative. Like yeah, like simply put, like our role is to inform and engage the public so that they can make a choice whether or not to support the bond at referendum. Mm -hmm. so, Can you say the last part again? Nope. Adequately informed and engage with the voters, residents, community as to so they can make a choice at the, the polls.
So the teacher would be says when I do say adequately fulfilled, the teacher would say the learner would be able to describe, explain, <laughs> etc. So when we get down to the measurable portion of that, um, how do we know that we have adequately fulfilled the well, so for so this is where I think we go back to, you know, what are the tools that we have? And so one of the things would be measurable goals. Like I would I would like to um, drive attendance for Counselor Corner Live. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, have everyone sign in and and yeah. have a record of whether or not, you know, and how pe and how people were informed. And and why they came to to Counselor Corner Live. So I think well, those are typically referred to as process versus outcome measurements. Okay. And so uh, and and so I agree with you. If you can't get outcome measurements, an outcome measurement would be the student will pass the test, or you know, when we survey people would be able to say this, or the big one would be passed. Uh, right. Uh, but we can't do any of those, so they have to be process oriented. And those, I think, if our those are attendance impressions, yes. website hits, page view, see all of those things. I think that yeah, since we're talking, of, if our goal, if our mission is to inform, right. and all we can really measure is how many participation, or just like how many offerings we provide, how many opportunities for yep. public engagement do we want to have. Um, how many times do we want to have content in the newsletters? Do we want content in every single newsletter leading up to November? I think we should. Yeah. I think that. too, it's like, again, if there's like a, from a communications perspective, if we agree, like the place that we want people to go to is the website and a place on the website to reference, are we seeing the clicks mm. and people going to that source, right? So if we're gonna do communication in the paper and the e-news, or even if we do something at a table, are we giving them the link and are we seeing how many times people are going to where we want them to go to get more information? Because to me, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to facilitate the information getting into the hands of voters and knowing that there's an anchor spot that's like mm -hmm. where we're sending them, then we can then measure how many how people actually went there. Each of those channels yeah. to getting them there. We get any data um, engagement data on the Facebook page. Yep. Mm -hmm. So and broadly, those would be the things that mm -hmm. we would come back to say, how do we do? I mean, what people say, well, we were innovated three times. I multiply three times whatever their subscription rate is, then I can make an assumption that we've done, if it's 12,000, we've done 36,000 impressions. Mm -hmm. By saying we put the newsletter up there, that particular page of the newsletter, or those things will spread X number of yeah. times of how many impressions. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to get really metric clear about it, we have how many households in this got those 8,000? 10,000, mm -hmm. right. So we'll pick around number 30,000, mm -hmm. right? Three questions per household. And that's just arbitrary, but it would be interesting to see. Mm -hmm. But it would have to be more than that to be comfortable. So it would have to be, mm -hmm. have to be the leader presenting in yeah. the leader three times. That's his subscription times three. Mm -hmm. So the, the ones, the other ones would be the Facebook, the, the newsletter, the newsletter, and the and email. Do we be able to? We don't send direct email except the newsletter, right? Right. Yeah. But again, that's where you can see. It's like we're sending the newsletter again. Maybe do we do we do a special edition that's like for sending the newsletter? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. We, we do. do like yes. Yeah. Voter yeah. guide. Yeah. So that would be a special thing yeah, that you could the voter guide uniquely. Well, I don't want to come on but I guess what I'm saying is that, that you know, what you're trying to do is put this out there so that each household at least was exposed to this mm -hmm. kind of five, six times. I don't think it's bad to say, like to set a 
goal to say we want 20,000 impressions of across various channels that we can show because again, that's like I think of like if we did a video on Facebook, those tend to get like that's true. Those get more views than if it was just a post about it. Yeah. So I think there's a way to do things that get the traction. Yeah. Twenty thousand might be too high. I'm just thinking like if, yeah, voters, I don't... if we get I assume voter turnout's gonna be in the high 60s, 70s, potentially, right? Is that usually what it is for a presidential? Yeah. I can't remember what it was last time. Is that too high? I feel like that seems I mean, for like the presidential election. So for us, that's like 15 ish thousand voters. So I would hope of those 15,000, we can try and reach at least three quarters of them somehow so that they at least have the opportunity to get informed. They may not take advantage of it, but to me, that's kind of. Do you think we should do for the in-person events, any sort of like one pager or like half sheet, some informational takeaway? I can say that would be good. If that could reach more people too. Or even again, if we just, again, have that anchor website, it's always like a, here's a snippet, but if you want more information, go to the website. Yeah. I think you have to take the better off with more shorter mm -hmm. than a separate communication. I mean, stuff that's buried in the newsletter, there's a ton of content. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one of the reasons why I think everything from the time of the time of the half is that you can take that newsletter and you can stick it to people's phones. And right, you, break it up. It's the same amount of work. If you can, Break it up so that people get multiple impressions. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, so it's the general rule. I would say shorter, bullet pointed. You know. mm -hmm. Agreed. I don't think we always need an article. I think right. that serves a purpose in certain instances. But if we're trying to repeat the message in multiple newsletters, mm -hmm. I'd rather just do snippets and then an article. I would, so often. Do we have good success when we post? when you first go to the website and you can sometimes do that pop-up that people oh, click on. Oh, I don't know if we can track, I guess maybe we could track page views of what it's bringing you to. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. true. At a certain point, switching that over to, yeah. Yeah. I'm just looking today by this whole guy video. Mm -hmm. You got 109 views on it. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Were you one of them, John? <laughs> no, the one thing I'm thinking though, like again, we, we always tend to lean on um, like electronic communications. And so how do we make sure we're engaging people who are less likely to go to a website? Mm -hmm. uh, I think of like when we went to um, Hillcrest, mm -hmm. like I, I think those people or the people who live there, I think aren't the target using those types of channels. So what are the non, like the more traditional channels that we can reach them on? Or is it a matter of just being like, we wanna hand out brochures to like 30 organizations and ask that they post them in a public place for their people, you know what I mean? Like, I always feel like there, there are a lot of people who aren't necessarily going on the internet to get their information. So how do we make sure we reach them too? Yeah. Some of that like convenient places, but right. You know, the, I researched my side of cash coin. I have nine million impressions a year, something like that. I don't know what the sign is out here, but I'm sure it's in that in that language. So is it possible to use that sign a little bit more vigorously to figure out just teaser stuff? Mm -hmm. on the so if you just said all we're going to put on the sign besides the time and temperature is, is snippets that tease you maybe they ask you a question and then those kinds of things because that sign probably is it's excellent thing it's maybe a little underutilized in terms of the number of impressions that's true. Yeah. 
But mm -hmm. oftentimes we use it currently the, the bug the newsletter, which is where all the other yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I think if you, if you do that, you, you could say in this case, want to learn about the land born mm -hmm. newsletter, mm -hmm. want to learn about the land born yeah. Facebook. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can basically just drive people using mm -hmm. those kinds yeah. of symbols. Yeah, questions so, about the land bond. Yeah, but I feel like. Well, oh, Michael, oh, I actually do have questions about the yeah. land bond. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what so what, so what land bond? Who is uh, who is the, the, the she know her name? She's heard her so many times, but very pleasant woman who speaks passionately about the land bond from the class. Just to Foley Ferguson. Foley Ferguson. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, it seemed to me that when you talk about the community things, mm -hmm. that those folks ought to be the ones going out there and strongly advocating. Oh, absolutely. And that's why, like, we kind of are always doing this dance between what's the council role and, you know, what is a committee's role or what is a, an organization's role. I had, like I said, I talked to Andrew Mackey and Obviously, they are in support of the land bond moving forward, and they're hoping to inform the council so that we have the information we need to put it to the voters. But it's not coming from the land trust. It's coming from mm -hmm. the, the PCLB. And so he's kind of doing this like dance too, yeah. where, you know, it, it there's a little bit of, I would totally agree with you, if PCLB doesn't have and land trust doesn't have a booth at Summerfest, you know, promoting their own interests in, in terms of passing the land bond, we can't, well, that's too big of a lift for the council communications committee well, to do by we, ourselves. If we, can't we go back them. to mission purpose, um, uh, I'm, I'm in favor of it, but I'm not so in favor of it that I'm going to go down and sit in the <laughs> yeah. and senior housing because <laughs> they're not going to want to talk about the land bond. They're going to want to talk about the thing they talk about. Sure. So, uh, yeah. yeah so, there's, uh, there's a difference between advocacy and informing, right? Like, well, yeah, I think, and, I think and, and some of it, I mean, you, I guess that really is why it is, I think, important for the council to take a stand on things if for no other reason. And it does allow the council the freedom to go ahead and advocate for stuff that they take at the time they analyze. I'm not saying in every instance, but in certain instances, that makes sense. Yeah, that's not happening here. So when you talk about that level of engagement, whether we're going down, I think what you guys can do as the town is you can call up Matty and you can call up Holy Ferguson and then you can say, hey, uh, you know, we're going to be promoting this, but you might want to step up too because they're the ones what we can do. Mm -hmm. So I do. I would say, like again, I think some of those things are things we could do. We can't require it. We can't say every counselor must participate. But I know in the past, some things have happened. Um, you know, when the library uh, went out, they did have a group kind of planning advocacy, and I think they invited us. But I don't think any of us went. And I think that was well, if we were invited, I think well. Yeah. But, but I mean <laughs> it's different. I, for the school though, I know I was pretty involved and so going door to door, standing at tables, going to events. And so, but that was a choice for me as a counselor. But I did it as a counselor. I would be like, I'm counselor Anderson, I'm supportive of this. Sure. I wouldn't say the council, everybody agrees, but well, it's but it's it's a, it's kind of a weird. Thing, even in that sense, because mm -hmm. you take something that is as big and important as a school, and to say that counselors don't want to go on the record to say they support it or don't support it. Now, in fact, when you're going out there individually, you know, you're sort of voting with your feet, but it is an entirely different thing. Mm -hmm. But that only happens, you know, you can only do that if the council votes it. Yeah, right. right. But it's a very interesting thing to say, to, to have that thing, to say, yes, we voted to put it out there because you deserve, we deserve the choice. But it's sort of like the congressional thing where they vote things out of committee without a recommendation. Mm -hmm. okay. Or they vote it out like we get 
stuff that we found that sets out the completion of such openness. Mm -hmm. Okay, so key messages. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. so some key messages that I had written down um, that uh, that I resonate with me. I don't know if they resonate with other people, but um, just that conservation is a mechanism for control and growth. Mm -hmm. um, that conservation has a very low cost to serve. Um, I wanted to make sure that people understood that um, the bond request is not an all at once mm -hmm. um, ask, that we bond it as needed. I think it's important they understand we have a very solid governance process with the committee mm -hmm. that governs recommendations to the council on how that money is spent if it's given to us. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, and I'm sure we'll talk about it at the workshop, but what's the scope of it? Is it the previous land bond had a bigger scope? I know the recommendation from the PCLB is to narrow it. I think that's a conversation the council will have to decide that's on. Definitely part of the agenda for the workshop. Yeah. Um, we, at leadership today, we, Nick and I felt like we should put the the whole scope the, from the 2019 project forward mm -hmm. and then talk about the PCLB's recommendation to pare it down. Yeah. Uh, but our initial pass is going to be to look at, to look at all of it. Yeah. And I think that was, it was interesting because I talked to one resident and I said, I think it should be the same story. But they very much felt like they would prefer it to just be just conservation. And so I think that's a discussion that that's, once we know, we can yep. say why it's either the big scope or the specific scope. Yep. So that way they know it's, it could be different than what they voted on before. Yeah. It's maybe so, important to provide some you know, history. Mm -hmm. spend, yeah. What did we spend the money on? And what has been the effect of that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Picture goes a thousand words. Did you know who were found to purchase in the land? Right. Did you know that could fit on the side? Mm -hmm. A bunch of did you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What else? We, we did a lot on the financial. Did we talk to, like, again, there, it might be good just to talk to, like, how conservation benefits the public, like, beyond just the, as a mechanism to counter growth. There are benefits in terms of drinking water, uh, you know, trails, other amenities that are things that people might care about. Mm -hmm. Property values. Property values. <laughs> so that we can get more of your money in the remit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a two-edged sword. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 What about like why now? Yeah. Uh, again, we should be clear that the current one is empty. Well, I think that it's important. You know, this is the new ones. But what we are approving is the borrowing capacity that allows us to take advantage of opportunities that are consistent with our sustainability and conservation goals. That's what we are funding. For. Mm -hmm. And that and, and that could happen. You know, you could pass that on and some giant parcel of land that filled with all the dots could suddenly be available and we'd spend it all at once. Mm -hmm. And we just did a pretty big chunk mm -hmm. recently for that exact reason. Or we could be not spending any of it because none of the opportunities are consistent with our goals. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you get that message out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but it's it, people will think of it as spending, 
what we're doing is we are creating the capacity to achieve goals that we've already improved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and that to me is an important message that without the money, we we'll wish. Yeah, I I really appreciate it. I just was talking to the way one resident kind of framed this. I'm assuming we all got an email. I can't tell anymore. Like, am I getting the personal email or is it the same person? Yeah. But they referred to it as we're asking for a line of credit, right? Yeah. Like we're that's, we're that's exactly this is really a line of credit request of we would love to have this credit available for when conservation opportunities come up. And it's the same thing, right? When you do have a line of credit, you don't start paying the interest until you start spending it. Right. Are you going to pay the interest on what you yeah. spend? Well, I think that's exactly what those are like common terms. Mm -hmm. like it, it was sort of like when we were talking about, it. I can't even remember the name of it, but the amount of money that we reserve so that we make sure get money back when people's taxes are exactly right. Oh, really? Oh, really? And, and that, in my mind, it's, it's like, well, that's just returns and refunds. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I mean, that's that's if you were, you know, if you were selling a widget, you would have on your books and a couple of returns and refunds because you knew there were going to be some. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, so I think you're right. There's a general rule. What language, familiar language. Mm -hmm. Target audience is everyone. I was gonna say <laughs> this is this is a town wide one. Every um, voter. Well, this will be a historic a historic election. Mm -hmm. Does this include like the key channels or tactics? I was gonna say that's one thing I noticed. Yeah that I think this worksheet needs is for us to be able to list our tools. Yeah. Tools and strategies or whatever. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. The sheet should. Well, I think that we just a piece we have made you have is something one of your communication examples you gave is basically kind of matrix of all of the channels. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that might be in the larger I mean, it could be, it could be like maybe before getting to channels and tactics, like we've also talked oh. more high level of like key strategies, like one strategy maybe encourage other third parties to Post be engaged. Yeah. And right. that could be make sure the PCLB is engaged, make sure SOT is engaged, make sure conservation commission is engaged and ask them, hey, you guys come up with your own plan. We're not going to tell you what it is, but we want you to know we have a, a plan, right. and you should have a plan too. So, I mean, is that something we can do? Can we just call up those people and say, we went to that, and we are, this is what we are going to do, this is what is within the high school place in town, and uh, we'd like to know what your plans are, or encourage you to have a plan. So, uh, I mean, could could we? We, we could. Um, you know, I think um, I don't think that's something that's historic. I don't think there's a level that's a level of coordination. I mean, this is a bit unique. You yeah, it's that. not as unique. Uh, but uh, some level of coordination with outside entities to partner on messaging or coordinate our communication. Yeah, or just kind of culminating all of it, all of um, the links or the posts that we've done about it and sharing that with partners, with the land trust, and they can do with it what they FYI, want to. This is what we're doing. Right. Nice and here's, here's the links doing. to the information if yeah. you want to share it. That's what we did for the library. Yeah, as I say, it's probably the best example would be a library. You know, mm -hmm. again, um, and we're <laughs> We didn't do a lot of it, but I mean, I would. <laughs> There's a level of coordination, and and again, we we felt like the obligation was to educate and inform, well, right? Not then it gets or, exactly. It gets yeah. tricky because if the land trust is saying vote yes, and then we link the land trust to right. our list of resources, mm -hmm. then it comes right. across that the town is advocating for a yes vote, and yeah. it's just noise. Which kind of goes back well, to, I guess, the, but I mean, maybe it's again we're talking land trust. Maybe we also need to be clear that. Like, we should be providing the information to any 
influential organization, whether they're supportive or not supportive, and they can then decide right. how what they want to do, but we can at least guide them to say, here's the information mm -hmm. up to you for how you want to use it. Mm -hmm. um, but again, like encouraging third parties to like communicate, whether it's for it or against it, I don't really care. It's more, right. are you getting the information out mm -hmm. to people to make that informed decision? Um, we asked what else did we talk about? Like strategically, I feel like we've talked about like how you make sure we have that hub of information to be able to lead people to. So to me, a lot of the channels we talked about with like social media, that's to get awareness, but how are we tracking action that we can say, not only are they aware, but they took an action by going to the website that just kind of indicates a little bit more in terms of actually informing them as opposed to them just kind of seeing the do you mean like putting a qr code on could be something like that flyer, like, like yeah or like if we make a video that, can you put a qr code in the paper i think you can do they let you do that or is it like a image as an image yeah i don't I'm an app. Well, I'm number one. I don't want to pay for it. Number two, I'm going to sound like I don't my, know how to do get so. my millennial yeah. <laughs> counterpart here to make sure I don't say the wrong words. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I think I think to me that's. Um, well, we can put it on anything. Like if we yeah. were gonna, if we were gonna if have a booth, out something. Right, if we were yeah. gonna have a booth at Summerfest, we could have the QR code, you know, on several pieces of paper. Yeah, and, yeah. And just to encourage to people to, you know, oh, while while you're right here, why don't you pull it up and then you can you can go back and look at it later. But yeah, because we need a bowl of that. Right, because we are numbers <laughs> bigger than yeah. yeah. like results. Yeah. <laughs> so what what Councillor Cushing referred to as process goals, those are really. I guess those are kind of uh, engagement and outreach objectives, right? Mm -hmm. So you want some metrics around that. And that's yeah, I mean, that's really the only thing we can add to that. That, that can go in the way that the graduates may come to speak. We can categorize process and outcomes. And if an outcome is something you can objectively measure that happens. And so if you're a teacher, you're very interested in outcomes. And the kid learned how to read for the past mm -hmm. week. Right. The process measure was they picked up the book. Okay. And yeah. so all we can do here, unless we unless we were to survey or or if we had a different goal, the outcome measure would be about the past. So so it really is all about how many impressions and what change. And the goal ought to be to get as many as we can. Yeah. But the coach me a long time ago, Dr. Holt used to write down his swing parts every day. Nick asked him, why do you do that? He said, because things that are measured before he swam twice as fast as the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, but the, what, I, what, what excites me if we actually do something like this for this. Is also knowing what works, right? Because I think yeah. we're going to try a lot of things, and well, we you know, good to know like which one, which which channel, that yeah, we're paying attention to, and I may inform other things. Like I think the videos, I think you started the videos. I think it was just nice to see because you can see on Facebook like how many views. Mm -hmm. And so when I saw that, I'm like, like I would actually go and look at some of our concert quarter videos, and I'd be like, I hope mine is the highest number <laughs> of views. And I would look at the other ones. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so, you know, I think it does. Um, that That's what led me to say, oh, we are, I think you just say, we need to do more videos because they seem to just get attention. Yeah. Speaking of, who do you think would be the good a good person to speak to this if we did a video? Karen. Those would be my guess. Yeah. Probably through. one to promote Comes from live. live. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in terms of like doing like mini snippet, yeah. like as we and even as we do like an information campaign, yeah, we align on three or four different quick snippets. Yeah, one, two, three, four. Yeah, like, your you like thing. That? Yeah, Could exactly. Be, did you know? I get really motivated 
that might drive around with some of these preserved spaces. So, yeah. Oh, that'd be a good to say. Yeah. Make a little flip. We got yeah. a video. Chat. I hear a volunteer for a video. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. You can go I think all this stuff go. helps. People just like put a name to the face. So it sounds like maybe some additional categories you can add to the form, um, which I think might be helpful. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this conversation for today because I think we've we've done what we need to do in terms of setting ourselves up for a few more weeks of work um, towards this, and then we when we reconvene in August, we will have had two articles in the Council Corner. Um, and so we can have a discussion of where we're at in this communications plan in August and then kind of recap the work that we've done and then talk about um, some more measurables and, and progress towards some specific goals um, in August. Yeah, I really like this sheet as like a collaborative. Like, I feel like this is good collaboration to get brainstorming yeah, and maybe yeah. get even you thinking about yeah, so execution. Nice. But I still feel like it would be nice to get to in this, like what do we uniquely yeah. own and do? Yeah. And there might be tactics that we can say, that's what the committee is gonna support, yeah. like the booth, uh, council corner articles, maybe doing some door to door, whatever mm -hmm. yeah. we decide. And then the, the town will clearly have something that's happening. Build the web page. Yeah. yeah. Do yeah social media mm -hmm. posts. Yeah. 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 Cool. Anyone online? Nope. We have no one in the room tonight for public comment. Um, I will work with Katie on future agenda items. Yeah. Item nine is adjournment. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Great. Thanks, Great. Thank you.